Welcome to example number 10. We have the bulb in a flashlight uses a power of 1.2 watts and there is a 550 microfarad capacitor that stores energy for this bulb which can be used for an operation of 10 minutes. So we're going to find the voltage across the plate of this capacitor, the plates of this capacitor, and what is the charge on one of those plates. So let's write down what we know. We know that the power is 1.2 watts. So we think of this as 1.2 joules per second. So it uses 1.2 joules for every second. And we know the time is 10 minutes. And hopefully you realize that since watts are in joules per second, we're going to need to convert this time to seconds. And we know that there are 60 seconds in one minute. So really, the 10 minutes will be equivalent to 600 seconds. Then we're told the capacitor has a capacitance of 550 microfarads. All right, and in A part, we're looking for what is the voltage across the plates and B part, we're looking for what is the charge on either one of those plates. What's the magnitude of the charge on either plate? And so here's a picture of our setup. This is the two parallel plate capacitor. And right now it's uncharged. And there's the battery here with the voltage V that we don't know. And we have a switch here that's open. And so this is in charge. So there's electrons that are equally distributed over these two plates. And when the switch is closed, these charges will suddenly start to move this direction so that this plate will become positive Q and then this plate will be now become negative Q. And then there'll be an electric field that will be established across the plates and it's going to be a uniform field. And if we were to plot a graph, the charge Q that accumulates on either plate versus the voltage of the, plate, of the battery as it charges up, we'll find that there's a direct relationship between the charge and the voltage. The work that's done in moving these electrons from this plate over to this plate is really going to be turned into stored electric potential energy, very much like a, a spring when you compress it, it stores a spring potential energy. Or if you move a block up a certain height, it stores gravitational potential energy. So it's the same kind of principle with electrical energy stored in a capacitor. Now if you recall, for a force versus distance graph, we may remember when we did a spring, the work was the area under the curve which worked out to be 1 half kx squared. If you remember that this curve was equal to f equals kx by Hooke's law. So it's a similar idea. If you take the area under this curve, this gives you the work done in moving these charges from one plate to another. So essentially, the stored potential energy in a capacitor is equal to 1 half times the charge on either plate this one or this one, multiplied by the voltage. So we know in this problem that we want to charge a, we want the op flashlight to operate for 10 minutes. And it uses 1 point joules per second. And hopefully you realize that if you know the energy per second and the time that you have, then you should be able to calculate the total energy needed. Remember, we have the power and the time. And power is equal to work over time. So the work in powering this flashlight is that power times time. The power is 1.2 joules per second, or 1.2 watts, multiplied by 600 seconds. That means you need 720 joules of energy to power this flashlight for 10 minutes of operation. Now, the work really comes from the stored potential energy in the capacitor. So really, we've just found out this energy. We don't know, we're looking for in part A the voltage, and we don't really know Q. But we do know the capacitance. And you know that, hopefully, that the capacitance is the ratio of the charge to the potential. It's like, actually, really, it's just the slope of this graph. The steeper that line, the more capacitance it has, the ability to store energy and store charges on these plates. So let's 
rewrite this equation as Q equals C times V and substitute that into this equation so we have one half times C V times V. So the stored potential energy is equal to one half C V squared. Now we're solving for the voltage. So the voltage would be equal to two times the stored energy divided by the capacitance. That's what the voltage squared is. So it's two times 720 joules divided by the capacitance. Now we need to convert this to farads. So it's 550 times 10 to the power of negative six farads. That's what microfarad, remember that a microfarad is equivalent to, um, oops, one times 10 to the power of negative six farads. And we have farads on the microfarads on the bottom there. And if you multiply all this on your calculator, you're gonna get a rather large number, but then you're gonna to need to take the square root of that number and your voltage will come up to 1,618 volts. And for part B, um, you can find out the charge either way. I suppose you could use this form again, or since you now know the voltage and the capacitance, the charge is equal to that capacitance times the voltage. So the capacitance is 550 times 10 to the power of negative six, and the voltage was 1618 volts. So that gives you 0.89 coulombs. And that's it for example number 10.